who were the Rosicrucians, and what was the true purpose for which the Brotherhood of the Rose Cross was formed. According to author Manley Palmer Hall, the Rosicrucian order may be the link connecting the Freemasonry of the Middle Ages with the symbolism and mysticism of antiquity. The tradition of Rosicrucianism is maintained by a secret society, but quite a few separate groups claim to be the true society. In his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, Hall poses important questions before he begins his examination of the fraternity, its origins, enlightened leaders, and secret knowledge. This knowledge includes the study of alchemy, mysticism, Kabbalah, and societal transformation with the goal of building a better world. Hall says the Rosicrucians themselves claim to be a religious and philosophic brotherhood, but wonders why then the society sought to conceal its inner workings. The modern Rosicrucian society can be traced back to the late 16th century. We must remember that this was a time of domination by the Roman Catholic Church, the teachings of the Rosicrucians would have been deemed highly heretical, and it is probably one of the main reasons the members had to keep their knowledge secret. In that century, many were burned at the stake for holding such beliefs. Giordano Bruno, a philosopher and mathematician who believed the sun was only one of many stars in the universe, was killed by the Roman Inquisition. The church sought to extinguish the light of learning that was spread by the men of science of the Enlightenment and Renaissance periods. Thus, many new thinkers had to form secret groups that became known as an invisible college. The original members of the Rosicrucians did not keep lists of their members, and in this way they were invisible. Some important Rosicrucian documents began to emerge in the year 1605. Author Stephen Sora lists several of these in his book, The Secrets of the Rosicrucians, and I've listed sources in the video description. These manuscripts included the restoration of the decayed temple of Pallas, the Frama Fraternitatis of the Meritorious Order of the Rosy Cross, which was published in 1614, the Confession of a Rosicrucian Fraternity that same year, and in 1616, the chemical wedding of Christian Rosencruz. However, it is an open question as to who actually wrote these texts. Manley P. Hall puts forth four distinct theories regarding the origins and purposes of the Fraternity of the Rose Cross. In his description of the first of these theories, which he calls postulates, Hall stresses the importance of the manifesto of the Rosicrucian order, the Fama Fraternitatis. This document, the report of the fraternity, begins with a reminder to the world of God's goodness and mercy, and warns the intelligentsia that their egotism and covetousness caused them to follow after false prophets, as opposed to following the path of true knowledge, which God in his goodness revealed to them. In order to remedy this, God sent philosophers and sages to teach the sacred knowledge, thus bringing about a reformation. The lead person in this reformation was a mysterious person called the Highly Illuminated Father C.R.C., a German-born man descended from a noble family but himself poor. The initial stood for Christian Rosenkreuz, which means the Christian of the Rosy Cross. This C.R.C. started a secret society of the Rose Cross. He was placed in a cloister when only five years old. Eventually, he set out on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to Damascus, and there he studied philosophy. During this time, he heard of a group of mystics and Kabbalists who lived in the Arabian city of Damkar, so he decided to visit there. He was only 16 years old when he arrived at Damkar. There, he was instructed in the secrets of the Arabian adepts. He learned the Arabic tongue and translated a sacred book into Latin and then brought it back to Europe with him. CRC also studied with Arabic magicians in the city of Fez and was there taught how to communicate with elementals, probably nature spirits, who disclosed to him some of the great secrets of nature. CRC also traveled to Spain, to Germany, 
where he eventually built a house where he could study and carry on his research. He enlisted the help of a few trusted friends to help him write down and thus preserve the secret knowledge he had acquired. These four men founded the Fraternity of the Rose Cross, and eventually the numbers increased. These Brothers of the Rose Cross Order swore an oath to follow six rules or bylaws, and then departed to distant lands to promulgate their doctrines among the wise of the earth. These six rules included the following. They should take to themselves no credit that they were willing to heal the sick without charge, that from time on forever they would wear no special robe or garment but dress according to the custom of the country where they lived. They should meet in the house of the Holy Spirit every year upon a certain day. Each member should search for a worthy person to succeed him upon his death, that the letters RC should be their seal, mark and character from that time onward, and finally, that the fraternity should remain unknown to the world for a period of 100 years. The body of the founder of the order, Father C.R.C., was accidentally discovered 120 years after his death, and at that time a number of boxes filled with books, secret instructions, and the lost arcanum of the fraternity was also found. The Fama Fraternitatis document ends by saying that, quote, In accordance with the will of Father C.R.C., the Fama has been prepared and sent forth to the wise and learned of all Europe in five languages, that all may know and understand the secrets of the august fraternity. All of sincere soul who labor for the glory of God are invited to communicate with the brethren and are promised that their appeal shall be heard regardless of where they are or how the messages are sent. At the same time, those of selfish and ulterior motives are warned that only sorrow and misery will attend any who attempt to discover the fraternity without a clean heart and a pure mind, end quote. This is the story of the Fama Fraternitatis and those who accept it regard Father C.R.C. as the founder of the Brotherhood, which he is believed to have organized about 1400 A.D. Manley Palmer Hall comments, however, that no historical evidence can be found to corroborate the story that a father CRC ever approached the learned men of Spain. In addition, the mysterious city of Damkar cannot be found, and there are no records anywhere in Germany that records the numbers of healing of sick people that the Rosicrucians claimed. There is no proof anywhere that Father C.R.C. was an actual person, and even members of his own order provided no description of him. The second theory Hall presents as to the Rosicrucian enigma is espoused by those Masonic brothers who have investigated and accept the historical existence of the Brotherhood of the Rose Cross, but are divided concerning the origin of the order. Hall says that one group holds that the society originated in medieval Europe and as an outgrowth of the art of alchemy. Another believes that a German theological named Johann Valentin André was the true founder of the society and that this group was merely a reformation of an already existing society which had been founded by one Sir Henry Cornelius Agrippa von Nettesheim, 1486 to 1535. Agrippa was a German polymath, physician, legal scholar, soldier, theologian, and occult writer. His three books of occult philosophy, published in 1533, drew heavily upon Kabbalah, Hermeticism, and Neoplatonism. His books were widely influential among occultists of the early modern period, and he was condemned, as well as his writings, as heretical by the Inquisitor of Cologne. Still others theorized that the Society of the Rose Cross was founded in Egypt and that it also perpetuated the mysteries of ancient Persia and Chaldea. Hall says it is probable that Rosicrucian symbolism is a perpetuation of the secret tenets of the Egyptian Hermes and that the Society of Unknown Philosophers is the true link connecting modern masonry with its mass of symbols to ancient Egyptian Hermeticism, the source of the symbolism. Many of those connected with the development of Freemasonry were suspected of being Rosicrucians. 
One theory is that Freemasonry was an outgrowth of Rosicrucianism, but that the Rosicrucian adepts became dissatisfied with their progeny and silently withdrew from the Masonic hierarchy, while leaving behind their symbolism and allegories, but taking with them the keys by which the locked symbols could be made to give up their secret meanings. According to Hall, others believe the Rosicrucian Brotherhood still exists, even though these adepts withdrew from the Masonic order. In an anonymous, unpublished manuscript of the 18th century, which Hall says bears the earmarks of a Rosicrucian Kabbalist, is found this statement, quote, Yet will I now give the overwise world a paradox to be solved, namely, that some illuminated men have undertaken to found schools of wisdom in Europe, and these for some peculiar reason have called themselves Fratris Rosicrucius but soon afterwards came false schools into existence and corrupted the good intentions of these wise men therefore the order no longer exists as most people would understand existence end quote. according to hall political aspirations of the rosicrucians were expressed through the activities of such men as sir francis bacon the count de saint germain and the count de cagliostro rosicrucians were also involved in the french revolution and author Stephen Sora asserts that Rosicrucians influenced the founding of the United States of America in what he terms the invisible history of the United States, one that is obscured in textbook versions of early American history. The third postulate of the Rosicrucian enigma of Manley Palmer Hall takes the form of a sweeping denial of Rosicrucianism. It states that the original order never had a historical foundation, but was instead a project of imagination, a mythical institution created for the purpose of deriding the alchemical and hermetic sciences. The mystery associated with the Rosicrucian Brotherhood has resulted in endless controversy, and many have tried to defend its historical existence. Others have cast doubts upon it. Hall asserts that while it is difficult to prove the existence of the medieval Rosicrucians, there is sufficient evidence to claim that it is extremely probable that there existed in Germany and afterwards in France, Italy, England, and other European countries, a secret society of illuminated savants who made contributions of great significance with regard to the expansion of human knowledge and wisdom, while maintaining absolute secrecy concerning their personalities and their organization. Hall's fourth postulate of the Rosicrucian controversy relies upon the concept of a transcendental explanation. This theory holds that the Rosicrucians actually possessed all the supernatural powers with which they were credited, that they were, in reality, citizens of two different worlds. They had physical bodies on the material plane, but were also capable, through the instructions they received from the Brotherhood, of functioning in a mysterious, ethereal body that was not subject to the limitations of time or distance, and they utilized this astral form to function in the invisible realm of nature, beyond the reach of the profane and uninitiated. This small number of highly developed adepts or initiates were no longer subject to the laws of mortality. They possessed the secret of the philosopher's stone and knew the process of transmuting the base metals into gold. However, they taught that these were only allegorical terms that concealed the true mystery of human regeneration through the transmutation of the base elements of man's lower nature into the gold of intellectual and spiritual realization. Those who hold to this theory of Rosicrucianism do not emphasize the historical events of importance in connection with the order. The adepts of Rosicrucianism were believed to have been able to teach man how to function away from his physical body at will. This was termed assisting man to remove the rose from the cross. They concealed the processes by which this was accomplished by the use of three alchemical metaphoric expressions, the casting of the molten sea, the making of the rose diamond, and the achieving of the philosopher's stone. The mystic theory about Rosicrucianism holds that the true fraternity consists of a school of supermen who exist not in the visible world, but in its spiritual counterpart. The counterpart is called the inner planes of nature. The adepts who exist on these inner planes can be reached only by those capable of transcending the limitations of the material world. 
The Rosicrucian document, the Confessio Fraternitatis, says, quote, A thousand times the unworthy may clamor, a thousand times may present themselves. Yet God hath commanded our ears that they should hear none of them, and hath so compassed us about with his clouds that unto us, his servants, no violence can be done. Wherefore now no longer are we beheld by human eyes, unless they have received strength borrowed from the eagle. End quote. And the eagle, according to mysticism, is a symbol of initiation or the spinal spirit fire. The mystical Rosicrucian adepts regard the Count de Saint Germain as their highest adept and believe he and Christian Rosencruz were one and the same person. Fire is their universal symbol because it was the one element they could use to control the metals. According to the Spanish-born French physician and hypnotist Gerard Encos, founder of the modern Martinist order, who used the pseudonym Pappas, the purpose of the mystical adepts was to preserve the spiritual nature of man through ages of materiality. He wrote, The Gnostic sects, the Arabs, alchemists, Templars, Rosicrucians, and lastly the Freemasons, form the Western chain in the transmission of occult science. Manley P. Hall tells that Max Heindel, the Christian mystic, considered the Rosicrucian initiates to be so advanced in the science of life that death had forgotten them. <laughs>